All right, today we're gonna go check out another Epic Home Studio. Today, our guest is Jeremy Lutito. He is a producer, songwriter, drummer, musician here in Nashville, Tennessee. He has produced and written two albums with his band, Leagues. He's also produced for bands like Colony House, Need to Breathe, Ingrid Michelson, and also produced and mixed the first recordings in 38 years for Chuck Berry. Very, very cool. I'll put links to Jeremy and his studio down in the description. Go give him a follow, see what he's up to. He's an incredibly nice human and very, very talented, has an amazing setup. So thanks, Jeremy, for having me out. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, go get the Studio Kit Drum Sample One Shot and Loops Pack. The link is at the top of the description. It's 35 bucks. I went through and made hundreds of drum samples of my Studio Kit. I've loved hearing and reading your feedback from those of you who have picked it up and listening to the tracks that you've made with it. So if you want to check that out, there's a link to it at the top of the description. Also, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this studio tour. I'm actually going to shout out a pedal that I got probably a couple months ago now and have recently been using it a ton on guitars. And it is the UA Golden Reverberator pedal. And this thing is super slick. I wanted to get a reverb pedal that was pretty straightforward and simple to use. It's got a plate, a spring, and a hall reverb on it. You've got your decay, pre-delay, and then an EQ and mod wheel on it. But it also has a bunch of other features that I haven't even started to dig into. So if you're looking for a reverb pedal, either for reamping or mixing through or just using on your guitar or bass rig, check this out. This thing is sweet. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Otherwise, hit the like button if you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel. And let's go check out Jeremy's studio. Question about this building. When did you build it and what was the goal here? Funny thing is I was renting studios for a long time and I was renting from a good friend of mine thinking, this is perfect, I like the setup. It was a similar setup. And he called me one day and was like, yo, I gotta move back in. And I was like, oh. all right. But it was the perfect nudge I needed to build, which I always wanted to do, but I didn't think I was ready to do it. We built it 700 square feet to be cost effective. I didn't want to do siding and double drywall and all that stuff. So I did cinder block, which is still great for sound, and yeah. then did core filled block, and then decided to do the stucco instead of just, you know, painting the cinder block. And then on the inside, you'll see later, I did the stucco on the inside as well. I think it's the first build I know of that was built with cinder blocks yeah. uh, in the core field. That's really cool. Do you know what kind of cost savings you think that would? I probably save like 15 to 20 grand, I think. Oh. So it's like just because it's eight foot structure. So yeah. with this, they do the cement block and then they pour the slab. Okay. Where when you're doing, you know, studs and siding and everything, you pour the slab and then frame it. But then I did some research and found that low frequency, actually, it's better for low frequency. And I just love the look of it. I think there was some sort of a Dwell Magazine carriage house thing that I saw that yeah. had stucco and I modeled it after that. And I, it was just really inspiring. So I was like, I would love to do that. And thankfully, we're not in a historic district because zoning could have said, nope, your studio can't look yeah. different than your house, but yeah. they, they were cool with it. It looks really nice. I mean, it does look like it came right out of, you know, one of those magazines. Yeah, yeah. Really well built. Looks great. Thanks, man. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Let's go check it out. Come on in. I didn't have a draftsman. I didn't have an architect. I literally drew the floor plan on Google Drawing. <laughs> Oh, to nice. To show my contractor. So small little kitchenette. You know, I knew I wanted a separate thing for just for chilling and grabbing a snack, making coffee. Got the fridge, got the drinks, got the espresso, water, all that stuff. So it's just like a chill break room. Eventually what I'd love to do is like mount a bar here. Oh, yeah. So you could do stools in a bar and someone could come work on their laptop, whatever. Having a fridge, coffee, tea, yeah. the sink is yeah. a huge plus yes when this is all just like you know home depot man like, yeah. it's just butcher <laughs> it blocks looks great. stained you know that's the thing just it, finding ways to go what are my essentials what needs do i need to kind of go bougie on and then what things can do i not need to spend that much money on and that's what just, i was like yeah this is like home depot standard that we just painted like yeah. it was like a hundred bucks for the whole sink um cabinet area so and then what do we got back there bathroom right here's bathroom yep and yes. you know just kind of what you need toilet and a sink and a little bit of storage and i can have a shower in here if i wanted to yeah then you come on in and we're in a large open space and right wow. here, right at first is a booth that I mainly 
used for tight drum sounds. Also, when I have guitar players here, we, this is our amp room. Heck yeah. Also a vocal booth, but you know, majority of vocalists like just singing in the open room these days, so it's only if someone wants to get a vibe, they like going in the booth. So what's on the walls in here? This is all just fabric. This is um, 703, I believe. I just told the guy who did it, I was like, hey man, I love, I love, love a bunch of different greens. Yeah. So he just did a bunch of different green fabric. and But I had the window cut right before the fabric was put in. So the window wasn't there in the original build out. Yeah. I had that put in. And yeah, usually I tuck vocalists back here so we can have some eye contact with the desk. The mic stands that take up the least amount of real estate are great. Yeah. I don't really do more than six mics in here, but I like getting creative with the mic. It would, situation. Be, it would be pretty tricky with the stands. Yeah. But you got some good stuff. You got the R88 and the, yep. the what is that, 84? Yep. Great. One of my favorites down here is this RE11. I don't know if you can see it there, but right here under the snare just as a as like a beater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A kick beater that I like kind of blow up through an Ampex or a DBX um, 165A. I love that that tone. And you're using an old Rogers. Yeah, those are my those are my go-tos. You it's funny cuz it's I have three kits and they're all Rogers. They're just my all-time favorite. You play drums? Yes, that's my that's my bread and butter. That's who I, I moved to town as strictly a drummer. What yeah. is this? Is that a real? That's a that real. That is brick? a real brick from our patio. That <laughs> sometimes when I'm just like, this is not dead enough. Oh I literally gosh. started throwing it on there, and I love the way it sounded. Holy and cow! That's just, and that's also based on the last thing I did. And I was like, you know what? When in doubt, put a brick on it. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More drums. More drums. More percussion. Toys. Yeah, Rogers. Like, I love this one because this has been converted. This was a 60s marching Rogers drum. It's a 26. Woo! And what is that, tw like Super 12? shallow. 10 or yeah, 12? Yeah, I think it's a 12. Um, and yeah, it's it just gets super boomy, but like, if I, you know, do a little out exterior muffling. It's amazing. It's and killer. then that came with these two toms, so it's got a 12 and a 13. And then the 15 was a field drum like a field marching snare drum that they converted into a floor tom. And I've been really happy with that. And then, but my OG Rogers is the champagne sparkle that I've had yeah. for almost 20 years. And it's it's the kit that I threw in a bunch of vans and took on tour and back when I was a touring drummer. And it just feels like it's a part of me. So I'll definitely sure, never get rid works, of that huh? one. Yeah, absolutely. And what are those snares down there? So the snares are all, ones? this is funny. Like I do have the Ludwig here. This has been great. There's a nut, this Rogers goes with these. And obviously Rogers never made this finish, but I got this at Nelson. Someone had stripped it and just done a really good job with a natural wood finish. And I, I just saw it and I was like, wow. And it sounds great. It has the 20 inch kick that I love. And then here I've got this red wine ripple snare set up with the kit that I, that I love. It's got that really like pangy, you know, without the muffling. It just has that like, it has that Motowny pang to uh -huh. it, meters kind of vibe. Heck yeah. Um, so yeah, the drums have always been been a part of what I do, and as I've expanded into production and writing, they're just I love always having them set up and ready to go, um, you know. And then when bands are in here, obviously like they'll bring some of their stuff, but I always love having it covered. Like bring something that's that you love, that's inspiring, but also we have a lot of choices here. Not not too many choices. I sure. like the right amount, you know. Yeah. Also. Um, this clearly drum percussion corner and you got the uh, the baffles back behind it. Yep. And then the interior wall. Yeah. Tell me about that. Same. So this was the my one uh, handyman contribution to the studio. <laughs> I'm not much of a handyman at all. I just, since I did sand filled cinder block, I just didn't want to paint it. So, you know, when you do that, you have to have your electrical conduit exposed. And so I chose to just look on YouTube. It's like, how can I stucco the interior? Cause I love the way that looks when you see these places in like New Mexico or, um, you know, California where the interior is this textured cement. So I figured it out. Nothing was in here yet. And I had just moved in. And so I, you know, got cement, a hawk and a trowel <laughs> and just, it like destroyed me. It was like, oh, you know, like just putting all this pressure on the wall. And then like, I finished the first, this uh, wall here. And then 
did this wall, and then on one weekend, I did this whole, the longest wall here. Oh, man. And at the end of the weekend, I literally could not make a fist. Like my hand, like they wouldn't move. It was, yeah. it was awful. But a friend of mine was like, man, it's important to do something that connects you with your space. Mm -hmm. And then I really thought about that. I was like, man, yeah. that's so true. It's like, whether it's painting or if you polish the floor or whatever, yep. I just didn't want to walk in and be like, yeah, everything's ready to go and sick, let's make music. I, it yeah. just feels good to feel like you did something, that whatever level it is. And yeah. I enjoyed learning about it. But then I got a little cocky and I was like, because the exterior wasn't done. It's like, I think I could do the exterior stucco. <laughs> and then I was able to find this one guy in town that just did an amazing job. And I was laughing because I saw them doing it. And they're literally like, his team was, you know, they put a scaffolding up and they're like whipping, whipping it on like it's butter. And I was like, yeah, that's like 20 years experience yeah. there. That's like, <laughs> I, that's, I should stay out of that. What are you primarily using this space for? Because mm. this is a beyond epic oh, backyard thanks, home studio setup. And yeah. you know, this is goals for I, probably most musicians, songwriters have a place like this. And... Yeah, man, I just wanted it to be inspiring. And the, the what I did is my career, I, I, I moved here as a drummer working day jobs and gigging at night and eventually got a tour in a van for a friend eventually got on in buses and then started my own band but then got into session drumming so I was able to take in how drums were recorded and then just for me in my path it was like being more creative co-writing and producing and I just wanted a place where I had space to have people over to collaborate that felt inspiring that didn't feel like because being a drummer I would play in all the commercial studios and some are awesome and some Sure. like this feels kind of like being at a Walmart or yeah. you know it just doesn't feel like inspiring and then some are really inspiring so I wanted it this place to feel like you could hang out and just feel like you're in a good zone to be creative because you're inspired by the aesthetic but also you could do all the things that you need to do like almost everything you know outside of recording an 18 piece string section i wanted to have not too many limits on what i could do sure. but let it still feel chill and like a really good just environment to be creative right where you don't feel pressured but anyway what i do often do is yeah everything from writing composing producing bands producing artists a lot of collaborations in here the keyboard section over here is new i've loved just like the balance between being in the box, instantly manipulating something that's been recorded yep. in the box, but then also being up and getting tactile and turning knobs and messing around with sounds and things like that. Yeah, this like is that. a really cool shelf. Is this custom built? Yeah, this is custom built by a guy named Caleb Smith. Um, he's done a few things for some guys in town, some people in town. Kind of like the studio, like I was winging it. I was like, I think I want something like this that could fit what I have right mm -hmm. now. And then we decided to do this drawer that's a work in progress. I'm gonna be adding more pedals to this. Right now, keyboard setup, just sort of all my favorites right now. I'm sure when things grow a little bit, I'll have to get some different Yes, yeah, <laughs> I mean, new I mean, this is pretty good, dude. You know, but I feel like I have a lot of bases covered here. We got the Mini Moog. Yep. Prophet 6 is great. Mm -hmm, I love that one. I don't know this, uh, the bigger Moog down here. This is the Moog 1, um, and it is intimidating at first. What I love about it is that it's so instantaneous. Every sound is like, holy moly, what is this? Tweaking it from there, it goes very deep, but also there's things that you can do to quickly get it where you want to go. However, that's the one that unless someone's kind of a seasoned keyboard, they might gravitate towards it and switch through presets. Mm -hmm. But what I love about the Mini Moog is like anyone who doesn't know anything about a synth can walk up and be like, oh yeah, and mess around and find something so cool because yeah. it's just super intuitive. That is the Krumar. This is an Italian synth. With, I think it's late 70s and they only made a few different ones, but um, I love it. It does like two things, <laughs> but <laughs> a little more than that, but yeah. it's awesome. It's basically got a brass, you know, bank of kind of just a brass sound mm -hmm. and it's got a string bank. I've always loved it. Um, I've had it for a long time. And then of course a Mellotron. I almost use that thing every day. There's always something to find in that or to manipulate. RE201, Space yes. Echo. Yep. What's on top of it? Oh, I have this, Boston, yeah, right? the Boss DM100. And the way I have it set right now is pretty cool. I have it going through these radials so I could send something 
um, mono, and it can either go to either one of them through this AB, nice. or it can go from the boss to the uh, Space Echo, yeah. It has this chorus on it. It's a pretty mild chorus, mm -hmm. but then the Echo is great, and it does the same kind of thing where you can ride the intensity and just be crazy with it. I learned about this actually through Vance Powell. Back in my um, recording days, I remember he got one of these and we did it on some drums, and I was like, I gotta get one of those. The pedal drawer is killer though, because you can tuck it away, yes. pull it out, Yep. It's all hooked up. I don't love them being on the floor, but it's tricky. I know. And I feel like for if you have tons of them, I mean, I've seen stuff online where people have this, yeah. you know, and it's just, and I don't know if I'll go that far with it. But I, again, I just love the ability to go being surprised. It's yeah. like, I'm going to do this, and I have no idea what it's going to do if I throw it through this because I don't remember what the settings were. And then, you know, there's some inspiration there to take you somewhere. All right, and then we have this beautiful piano. Yes. Here. Where'd you uh, get this thing? I got this through Nashville um, Piano Rescue 10 years ago. And it's just... Wow. Yeah. I. It's just... Oh my god. It just has this rich, rich sound. I've always I, I'm just kind of lucked out on it. I got it for 500 bucks. Oh my gosh. The the mic setup on this, we just kind Those of old AKGs? These are yeah, these are D19s, which I I love on drums. Yep. I love on like beat up acoustic. Um, kind of a like a gnarly acoustic sound. They're like, you know, the quintessential Beatles mic. It's like those pictures of Ringo where it's just three D19s. And yeah. You're like, yes. But for now, like they've been amazing as just this kind of help widen um, the piano for me. And it just kind of puts it into this space. And it all, because they're here at the soundboard of the piano, it almost sounds like a contained reverb, but they're not going through, through reverb, which yeah. I, I like a lot. And then of course the coals are just unbelievable here. The Soyuz, I do love it on vocals and guitars. Is it the FET? No, this is just the, the, tube? the tube, this 017. Um, but it gets, I love because these are so warm yep. and, and give it the width it wants, but then this gets just so much detail. So sometimes I love like taping paper towel to Mm -hmm. to the board so that the hammers hit it and then you get all this texture and then you're hearing the hammer. This is the guy that gives all that detail. So I feel like I'm finally got my bases covered and then, you know, if I don't, if I want a more contained sound and I've done everything from that to putting a weighted blanket over this whole thing so I get a very oh, close, yeah, intimate sound too. That's a great setup, dude. Yeah. That I, 17 is probably my favorite mic. It's unbelievable. And I, I, it was primarily my vocal mic for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's so detailed, but it does, to me, it's not hyped. Yep. But with some singers, it's perfect. But then I've had singers sing into it where they're like, oh, I can hear my tonsils. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well. Don't worry about that. We could take, you know, just stay hydrated. It'll get yeah. your mouth noises out, yeah, you know, yeah. or we can RX that. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, <laughs> I've always loved it. And you know, same thing, acoustic. So sometimes I'll, for now, I love this. I'm sure that I might put something different here, but if I need it for a vocal, but it's that good to have the option. Absolutely beautiful. Now, the amazing listening, mixing, recording yeah. spot. Immediately what stands out is those PMCs. Yes, and those actually, my good friend Ryan Hewitt um, passed those on to me. Um, I moved into this room and I was a, I had been on the Proax Studio 100s forever. Yeah. And love them. Once I got into this room, I was working for four months and I was like, oh, wait a second. I think I need bigger speakers. Yeah. Ryan was in LA and doing he, chili peppers. Doing chili peppers. Yeah. And the whole thing was, and he had his whole studio in storage. I just called him saying, hey, what would you suggest for my room? And he's like, dude, like my PMCs are literally sitting in storage. He's like, oh. to just, why don't you like try them out for a few months? And I was like, you are a godsend. Thank you. And then I put them up and was like, okay, <laughs> now yeah. we're cooking with gas kind yeah. of a thing. That's a big adjustment going from just having 
the pro X much closer. Yes. And then having three or four feet yeah, away from because you. I was in a shallower room before this. Well, I was in a, a similar setup, but I was work basically working with this kind of a um, depth. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was only about 20 feet deep and it was a little more dead in that room and the, the pro X made a lot of sense and I had a sub, you know, sure. Um, but yeah, that, these have been amazing. And then, you know, having these just for reference has been a good move. I, I just added those to the setup like a year ago. I haven't just judged. to check where's my vocal really sitting at. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a mixer, but I'm st starting to mix more just based on, I love getting a mix as far as it can go before yeah. it goes to a mixer. And then sometimes it ends up being like, you know what, we love where this is. Let's. It's at the two yard line. Yeah. Let's put it over. So. Sweet. And then you've got the output desk and the sidecar. Yeah, I, you know, that's new too. I, I just kind of was using like an old work desk. It was like a crafting desk. I was gonna have um, somebody custom make a desk and I was like, you know what? I just like how it's set up. Yeah. And then I asked some friends like, is it solid enough? Does it work? And they're like, yeah. And I just kind of was like, you know what? For the price and for what I need it for, this is perfect. Feel good about that. Um, this is pretty much my vocal chain. 90% of the time is the 1073 into the Retro 176. Yeah, those BAEs are fantastic. Those are great. That was my very first pre that I ever bought. And I just kind of saved up at that. that gosh, I probably had that since 2010. And it's just been unbelievable. Like, it almost like it's like it keeps getting better. But I knew at that moment, I was like, if I'm gonna go in on it, I'm just gonna go big and yeah. get the one that I'll never ever regret or ever really wanna sell. And is this the master bus thing, the 52? Yeah, Ford? that, yeah. And that's newer, um, it's a diode compressor. And I've really loved that, running it parallel. Like one thing I've done is run the um, R88 as an overhead mm -hmm. on the drums and run it parallel. I've sent the coals through it on the piano. It's, I really, really like it. it. It's like a perfect amount of coloring and just has that Neve sound. And then the retro compressor, right? Yes. What's the, what is this called? What's it's the just the it? 176. 176, mm -hmm. okay, nice. That was like that one thing that was just night and day when I got it set up, especially with vocals and yeah. bass and drums. And But like, oh my gosh, the vocal difference is just huge. Crazy. That's fun, dude. But Are you still using the 17 on vocals? I do, yeah. 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 Still through, through the BAE and the retro? Exactly. Yeah, yep. that's a yep. dangerous change. It is. It's like, it's just, it's instantaneous. You're like, okay. And then here we have a couple of the retro 500 series, which I really like right now. Those are tubes. So right now all my synths are going through that. I don't know if this is mag or mog. It's like moog or moog, yeah. whatever. It's um, mag. Is it mag? <laughs> I, you got them both wrong. Um, <laughs> no, that was that's great. I love that's actually been really cool on vocals as well. Um, you have the air gain and everything. You can kind of boost those higher frequencies. And then I've been really impressed with the Neve, the Rupert, the 511. Oh, cool. Um, I really like the way it sounds. Okay, what are you using it on? Um, right now, I don't think I have it on anything right, but I was running the 440 on the drums through it. And oh, I cool. really dug it because you can add this texture, the silk the here. Silk, yeah which is just nice, nice kind of for that up, up, upper mid boost as well, or just tech kind of saturation. And the burls on the coals? The burls are, yeah. And I've had those for a while and I really love those. How would you describe those? Are <sighs> they more transparent or are they fatter? I think they're fatter. They're like, mm. uh, they're more fat to me and they do have a color and it's kind of mm -hmm. just more of that thicker buttery thing. Yeah. I've actually really liked those on drums. Um, I've done the 88 as an overhead on those. And then of course, you know, these, the 512s are just loud and good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those have been great. You got a 165A, that's pretty rare in a home studio. Man, I love this so much. I got it because of drums, because I've worked with an engineer in town named Logan Matheny, who's incredible. And he turned me on to this. And it does this thing like for snare drum or overhead, there's that snare sound and I can't describe it any other way where you get enough in and out on the compression where it sounds almost like a beatbox. Oh, it's okay. like a, it does that thing oh, okay. where there's like, it pushes that tone um, and you can even EQ it after that and push that like 120, 150 where it hits you in the chest. Mm -hmm. And it, it does, uh, you know, Tame Impala's on, it does this, like that, oh, those drum sick. tones. It's like, I've even done like, 
bass through this and jacked it so that it's like basically acting as an amp parallel. Nice. That's been amazing. Yeah, I just, I've done vocals through it, like for an affected kind of like gnarly vocal. I just love it. It's, it's so good. And then you're rolling with the Apollo X16. You got mm -hmm. the X4 over there and a satellite. Yep. Lots of DSP. Yes. Gas. Yep. And I see you got Ableton Live open here. Yes. Tell me about that. What do you, is that what you're rolling on mainly? I roll that on that mainly. I started in Pro Tools, okay. and then as I got more into writing and production, I love how quick and intuitive and inspiring Ableton is. Mm -hmm. It's just so easy for me, like the way the MIDI is set up, the way it's integrated. Up like any DAW, there's totally annoying things. Yeah. <laughs> there's like, like if this was just 10% more like Pro Tools, it'd be perfect. And then if <laughs> Pro Tools was like a little bit more like Ableton, it'd be perfect. But sure. basically the way that it's just recently come down to my workflow is from inception of a song, it's Ableton till about 80% because I mix as I go, okay. and then yeah. if, I, if I'm if i mixing it, yeah. I transfer it to Pro Tools. Yeah. And because it's just way more intuitive. I've, I've gotten quicker at editing in Ableton, so I don't have really complaints with that. Drum editing in Ableton is not the best because the way that the warp works and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you're editing one single piece of audio and quantizing it, yeah. it's Great. incredible. Yeah. So it's like anything, there's amazing things about it, but it's not, you know, it started as a DJ DAW primarily. Yeah. And it's granular, so it's sampling everything. And that that's what I learned the difference was in Pro Tools is, um, but I still, I go into Pro Tools more often now. But yeah, I just love that's how cool. fast and intuitive Ableton is for creativity. All right, so you're drumming, you're producing. Did you say you you actually do writing? Or are you running sessions and bringing writers over? Yeah, or? I do co-writing and yeah, with artists. Um, that's that's pretty much. I'd say that's the bulk of what I do is um, um, whether it's a artist and we're kind of doing a one-off. Um, I do a lot, a lot of. I'd say like 30% of what I do is film and TV oriented okay. writing, do sync stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then with that, it's just writing from scratch and then fully finishing it out. And that's how I be, got more into mixing because that's sort of the expectation is like you, if you do a sync song, I'm gonna finish it all the way and mix it myself. So that's sort of how I cut my teeth on just getting a little bit better at mixing. Do you work with Musicbed or anything like that? I did, I have worked with Musicbed in the past. That's been awesome. I'm published with Concord Publishing and so working with them and their sync team's amazing. Okay. Artists anywhere from um, Jesse Wilson, who I just work with, and we, we did a song like two years ago and it ended up being in the new the new movie that just came out called Woman King. So that was cool. You know, nice. just like, it's just yeah, all about dude. like, you write something that you feel like you you like um, that could land somewhere. It's all about not getting too on the target, but yeah. you know. Putting, um, putting coins in the machine, you know? Absolutely. That frees me up to go, okay, cool. I want to work with this band that has no money and I want to develop or I yeah. want to do this and spend money on, or spend time on projects I really love. So yeah, it's all part of it. All the irons in the fire. I'll, Keeping them going. I have two more yeah. questions. We've got yeah. the task him over here. Yes. What are you doing with this? Okay, so this is newer, and I've just kind of integrated it into, I could record onto tape, I could mess with the pitch, I could do things like that. I was doing something this morning. Okay, so right now, the, yeah, the drum set is going through it. So I could push. Oh yeah. EQ it. I just love these EQs on these things. And then pushing the input. So that's yeah. fun for that, you know? And then yeah. I can mess with the pitch on it and stuff like that and the speed. And so um, that's been a new addition. Any any kind of thing that takes the process, like, okay, cool, I recorded those drums, they sound good. How can we completely annihilate it, yeah. you know, in all different ways? I've sent drums through there. I put stuff through the um, the Ampex over here, the ATR 700. That's been fun. Yeah, and you got these guys over here, And too. then these, so what I love about the difference is this, I would say in degrees of just like color and frequency, this is on that like cheap but awesome range. Mm -hmm. This gets a little bit more expensive, but doesn't get all of your low end when you crunch stuff up. It gets like that nice warm crispy. These get 
crispy and thicker. They like, they take and saturate your low end still is wow. what I've noticed about them. And obviously those would typically be connected with a tape machine, but I love They're those. They're so big. They're so huge, I know. That's and so they get really space. hot. Yeah. I have to remember to turn those off because I'm like, I don't want my studio to burn, burn down. Yeah. <laughs> Though right now I've got the drum set up of the, I've got the 67 going through the bottom one and the M49 going through the top. And then the undertone audios I love, these down here are awesome. There's a lot of switches, you know, I'm not a super technical <laughs> guy. At first I was like, okay, what the heck does this do? And just yeah. playing with it, like adjusting the impedance mm -hmm. is so cool what that does. It just it opens up kind of like in a way, like how the boost on the mag and the Rupert Neve 511, the silk, it sort of just adds that extra saturation in the top end. And then you got that Pultec up there from Audioscape. Yeah, Audioscape, man, they're awesome. It's been really cool. Oh, yeah, I love really thing. Nice. Yeah. So watch your step. Okay. Take, <laughs> grab on, oh yeah, maybe I have my no, bass poking through there too. It's pretty much storage right now, but it's funny, it's like the last thing you think of when you're building a studio. You're like, you know what, I might need storage. Uh-huh, of course. <laughs> but might. It, it's also just a great spot. Eventually up here, I'm gonna have like, you know, couch and chill hang. It might be a good little editing suite, but it is definitely the place to come and just like, get some perspective and so yeah, eventually it's gonna be chill vibes, but right now it's a place for dead cases and <laughs> you it's know. It's a great spot for an assistant. Egg, exactly. For intern editing. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think I'll do, I'll put my old desk up here. Actually, it's probably gonna happen this month and just find a nice little chill couch and it could be that editing assistant spot and then even Personal like masseuse. A, yeah, that, I mean, I'm absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? But yeah, or like get out of your head lyric writing mode. Like I need to, I need to get off this couch or whatever. I'm gonna go up here. I would like to see what drums are up here. I might have to do a little bit of treatment. Um, yeah. But it, you know, slappy. I think I've done like acoustics up here once to just get like that yeah. slappy thing, and it was it was kind of cool. And it's cool how you have it shaped too. I yeah. Think, what is that under the other? This booth is here? going. Yeah, this is going up over the the booth, and then. My friend did these stairs, um, Adam Kiefer. Um, he's an incredible like furniture maker. And uh, yeah, he did, the, he did the stairs. And I knew it was like, okay, I don't want like a straight up ladder, but I don't have room for real stairs. There's still people, I'm just like, please be careful. <laughs> like yeah. don't. It's, the floors it's, are very hard. Don't take it very, like don't be aggressive with it. Just kind of like hang on and leisurely walk. Well, dude, thank you so much for having us out. Absolutely, This man. is an unbelievable build, and I, you are so lucky that you get to come in here uh, every day. I, every day I tell myself that. I'm like, is this really happening? The, I, just I, I keep seeing the sun glare for, through the window, and it is like heavenly. It, it's awesome, <laughs> it has, except there's a specific time during the day where I'm like, I have to be that guy and wear shades in the studio right now. Cause like if I'm sitting, it's like right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'll, you know, I'll take it. I'll deal with that. Yeah, whatever. man. This is, this is really, really uh, inspiring as cool. you said, but sounds cool, looks cool. I'm sure it functions amazingly. Yes. And uh, it's great. Absolutely. I'll put uh, links to your Instagram or whatever Amazing. you have. Yeah, perfect. Do you have a website or anything people who I are don't, this? but I have Instagram. Um, but yeah, and it's called Immersion Studios, but I don't even have a handle for that or anything. It's just, <laughs> that's what I'm calling it. You I'll, know? I'll find it and I'll yeah. link it down there if people cool. wanna go follow you. Yeah. And uh, you got anything coming out or anything that people who maybe wanna go see or listen yeah. to? Yeah, um, Devin Gilfillian is an artist, so we just finished his record. He's got a couple of the singles out. And then I'm finishing with a, a full album with an artist now named Savannah Conley that's incredible. Um, and she, she, her record's gonna come out right at the top of the year. All right, well, keep an eye out for all of those projects and cool. uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Awesome. See ya. Thanks.